Hello, Andrea. Um, thank you so much for accepting our invite to come to talk to us. Um, the theme of this year's World Water Day is accelerating change to solve the water and uh, sanitation crisis. And this sounds exactly like the work that you do, which is all about catalyzing positive change. You have international level experience in river management and you are the director of CHIRF. Can you tell us a bit more about what you do and what CHIRF does? Thank you, Alessandra. Um, personally, I'm an environmental engineer. I have started working on wastewater treatment uh, in Italy and then, and then abroad. Uh, and then after a while uh, working on, on uh, wastewater, I fell in love with rivers and, and then came back uh, again to, to Italy and became the, the managing director of this association, the Italian Center for River Restoration. Um, CIRF uh, was born in 1999, uh, just before the, the Water Framework Directive uh, came into force, uh, EU legislation that change it dramatically the, the, the perspective and where a lot of efforts uh, the EU scale actually started. Uh, we are a network in practice of, of technicians and uh, all our work is based on, on a scientific approach and the effort as you say is trying to gather the best uh, experiences in terms of sustainable river management uh, and planning of river corridors and try to foster change in how rivers are concretely managed uh, in Italy and to some extent at the EU scale because we are part of several networks and this is a very important role especially in Italy where concrete experience on river restoration is very limited and so the fact of being part of EU networks means that we can put in in contact river managers in Italy to uh, much longer term experiences in these kind of, of, of approaches. Uh, you have mentioned, Andrea, that you are an environmental engineer and that uh, uh, Europe has recently seen both sides of the water crisis with too much and too little water, all within a very short period of time. Uh, drought is of great concern to us all and there has been talk about securing water resources, but with sometimes diverging approaches. Can you talk us through a few of the ideas that are circulating at the moment? Yeah, last the summer uh, we were in the middle of probably the, the, the worst drought in the last 500 years, not, not only in Italy, but also in other uh, EU countries. And uh, we didn't even have the time to get out of the drought. And we were in the middle of, of extreme floods, uh, which caused extreme damages and, and, and casualties in, in some regions in Italy. Uh, so this is probably our new normal. Uh, we are jumping from droughts to floods. And even the definition of extreme events is, is changing. Uh, most probably in the next future we will experience events that we have no have no clue about we have seen that with tropical storms happening in places where I mean, it was actually the first the first time so we really need a, a paradigm change but despite that some some countries and italy is one of them uh tries to implement always the same solutions so mainly uh, gray solutions based on concrete and the assumption is that with additional infrastructure we can actually solve the the, the problems both in relation to droughts and, and 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 floods which is most probably a very optimistic assumption uh on the other side we have uh, luckily the the european commission suggesting that we need to focus on different approaches integrate approaches so maybe some infrastructure may be needed somewhere but working with nature is more and more important and in many EU countries there are concrete experiences on that that are successful and especially the scale of that is is increasing 
So we really need to convince our decision makers that the kind of solutions that are being funded so far cannot save us alone from what is going to happen in the next future. You talk um, about infrastructure and um, our minds go immediately to dams. We wonder what are your thoughts on dams, which many engineers just want to build along rivers everywhere. And, and why do you hold that view? Yeah, dams and, and reservoirs uh, was practically the only solution that was put forward by, by our decision makers during the last drought, for instance. Uh, dams uh, I mean, is, is an old solution and it seems a smart idea, you know, collecting water and then being able to use it when, when we have less. But we often forget that it's a solution that has many drawbacks. Uh, for instance, in relation to drought, uh, accumulating water in a reservoir means that especially with increasing temperatures and especially in, in small reservoirs, you lose a lot of the resource due to evaporation. So like in, in, in Italian climates, uh, it means that you're practically losing the first meter of water in all the reservoirs that you're building. Then increasing temperatures and stocking water uh, with an increase in temperature, lower oxygen levels means that you may have severe problems of quality. Things, for instance, about cyanotoxins and all the related sanitary issues. Um, I mean, if, if you live in a very hot country and you want to, I mean, to keep water for the future, probably stocking it somewhere else is, is, is a better option, uh, like in the groundwater. It's a safer and more sustainable way to, to, to keep it. But uh, dams then are recognized as one of the main pressure factors, one of the main environmental problems in, in, in river systems. Uh, they, they disrupt connectivity. This is easy to understand. Uh, migratory fish are not allowed to move anymore to their reproduction sites. And so this has led to massive extinctions at the EU level. And this is well recognized. Um, but there are other aspects that are not as well known as fish. For instance, dams are blocking sediment transport. And the rivers are like conveyor belts, and their existence is based on the fact that these sediments can flow through from mountains to the sea. And if you're stopping this sediment transport, there are many effects that affects our rivers. So they change their morphology, the riverbed, they, they collapse, they in size. Uh, if you go to the coast, if sediments coming from upstream start to, 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 to reduce, then erosion of the coast is increasing. Um, if we are practically transforming our rivers into uh, uh, bullying alleys, this is also worsening our capacity to cope with floods because we are accelerating floods downstream instead of slowing them down in floodplains. So our floodplains, which are a sponge and which is a security factor in relation to floods are more and more isolated from the river channels. Uh, groundwater table is getting down due to this river incision. And so we are losing access to water. Uh, our riparian vegetation is dying due to lack of water. Again, due to lack of sediments, uh, salinization of aquifers. If riverbed are incising and then the groundwater tables going down, salty water, saline water from the sea is going upstream and upstream. So we are losing again resource. So as you can see, I mean, a supposed solution for drought is then worsening problems downstream, both in relation to droughts and to floods. So we really need to keep in mind the, these links and, and similar issues related to floods. We always think that, you know, we, we can solve the problem just with brute force. So building higher and higher dams and embankments and bank protections, but this is often worsening the problem because it's just shifting it 
downstream instead of using the space that we have to uh, slow it down. Your comments uh, seem to highlight some concerns which are common to those observed in Australia over the recent uh, flooding of our summer, which we've just had. Um, Given that you have explained how dams are not a good idea because of the water loss, the uh, delay or prevention of sediment transfer and the reduction of water quality being only a few um, concerns, could you suggest some ways where, in your view, we might be able to secure water for human purposes, for our own interests, while not hurting the environment? Well, not just from myself, but uh, this summer, while in Italy, all the newspapers were just talking about the importance of building new dams and of obtaining funds for that, the European Commission published a proposal for a new European regulation. And the focus of that is closely related to the problems that we are discussing now. And it's, it's a proposal, legislative proposal on nature restoration. And it talks about restoring space for water, space for rivers, about preserving soils exactly for that reason, in order to better adapt to climate change and to ensure the availability of resources. It's not just about protection of habitats and species. So think about soil, even just working on, on ensuring a healthier soil and especially increasing the, the organic matter in soil can restore this very important role of sponge. So increasing organic matter allows the soil to accumulate, to store incredibly high amounts of water and then making it slowly available to plants, but also storing water during uh, heavy precipitation. So it does a role both in relation to droughts and in relation to flood mitigation. And if you take the numbers, they, they are huge. So just increasing by 1% the organic content can allow to store almost the same amount of water at national scale that is now stored in all the dams that we already have. So it, it, it's not negligible, it's really, it's really huge. Then water reuse. So we are losing a lot of water that we treat more, more or less, and then it's dumped into the sea, for instance. And this is another piece of regulation which is insufficiently applied in Italy. We need to reuse water as much as possible. Uh, again, river restoration, ensuring that the dynamics of, of rivers are closer to nature can restore the uh, groundwater feeding, which is an important role of, of rivers. Now, if, if you take a typical river system, most of the water is withdrawn and flows into tubings for most of the year, like 90% or over. But all this water cannot feed the groundwater anymore. So the riverbed itself can allow to store water in the groundwater. If there's no water anymore in riverbeds, this role cannot be carried out. So it's really important. Same thing when you have a flood event, all the water is flooding along the floodplain can then help restoring the amount of water that we have in, 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 in groundwater. So giving more space to these dynamics, giving back more space to these dynamics is also a, a crucial action. And then, of course, we need to work not just on the offer side, but on the demand side. We need to really understand how we use that water for. And this is closely related to the kind of agriculture that we are carrying out. Intensive agriculture, uh, the kind of culture that are not adapted anymore to the availability of water that we have in, in our country. I mean, maybe in Australia, you know better than us. Uh, what we're talking about. But we need to understand that the system is changing dramatically. And we cannot just think that building new infrastructure can allow us to store 
water and 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 feed this system this system forever like now if you think we have already many dams and they are empty we are not able to fill them so just building hundreds of new ones maybe is not the best solution to solve to solve the problem you have a similar issue if you think about artificial snow it's not directly related to the drought we're talking about but uh, it's it's also i think uh, a very clear example of the reasoning uh, snow is rare now it doesn't snow anymore as it's used to 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 do in the alps and so the solution is building reservoirs accumulating water and producing artificial snow 90 percent of the ski areas in, in Italy now uh, could not work without artificial snow. But then we need to take that water from streams that has, have less and less water because we are losing our glaciers. And so, I mean, and the temperature that we have we will not allow anymore to produce artificial snow. If you think the forecast say that uh, by 2030, 2050, we will have probably 10% of the snow that we, we have now and the temperature for most of the time will not allow it to produce even artificial snow. So we are building more and more infrastructure in the mountains, losing landscape for something that probably will become useless. So we really need to understand that we need to change the way that we use our territory, our landscape and, and, and adapt not just basing on infrastructure, but working with nature. Um, those are great points, Andrea. And uh, you also mentioned the small things that uh, can be done, increasing the organic matter in, in soil, reducing our consumption. We are not the government, uh, but we are many, many individuals. Uh, what would you suggest as the one thing that each and every one could focus on, especially this year, to try and accelerate change in the right direction? I think everyone, firstly, can try to in in inform better and try to understand the pros and cons of the different solutions. Uh, because if we don't understand, then it's very difficult to take to take a position. Uh, we need to understand if we have to be happy or not uh, whenever we see works along along a river. Uh, maybe if we understand we should not be always happy if we see a huge embankment being built, then maybe we could speak out loud a bit more and influence our decision makers that in the end uh, just try to be elected another time and, and so being more visible, more active, even in the, you know, in the small events uh, that happen in our communities uh, is what will drive change in the end. Thank you for your time, Andrea. We learned um, a lot of interesting things today and many of these insights will be particularly of value to the people who are watching us today. You cannot be with us today in presence uh, because you're talking probably with politicians and we wish you all the best in this uh, mighty mission you have. And we appreciate your uh, technical explanations and the language that you're using so that many people can understand because while you're looking at Italy um, in particular, these are common problems, common challenges across many nations around the world. Thank you for having me and for organizing the event and uh, happy World Water Day to everybody. Bye. Thank you.